Good morning, YouTube. Back at it again today on this uh, soundboard cart. So we're going to knock out a couple of things today. Um, I'd like to be able to get this ready to use tomorrow at our band practice. Uh, so I probably won't have it painted, uh, but I want to have the wiring done so I can actually put the board in it and have it hooked up nice and neat in the way it's supposed to be. And then um, I'm also working on this, I just came in here to the garage and I found a piece of scrap wood and I thought, well, maybe this will work. Of course, I was thinking about it last night. I kind of have a plan for how I want to do this front door that goes onto it. And um, so I kind of started working with, I found a little piece of scrap trim wood and I thought, maybe this will work. So let me show you what uh, my idea is. So here's a piece of scrap trim that I have. I've got cut spliced down the middle in two pieces. And then up here, I'll just do eyelets and hooks just like I did in the back. Okay, and then at the bottom to hold the bottom on, just to cut this piece into two pieces, I'll tack that piece right down onto the sound card itself. And then this piece, I'll tack to the bottom of a piece of wood um, that's attached to the front cover. And so when you set the front cover in there, it'll just set right in place and it'll kind of lock itself in. So, so I made the piece of wood. I'm not sure if it's gonna work or not. I have to go to the store and get some more plywood for the front and for the top of the covers of this cart. So I won't really know until then, but I'll show you what I did. I had to splice two pieces of wood together, which I don't really like either. I'm just kind of testing it out. So here's what I have. This is the two pieces of wood that I spliced together. Um, you see they're different colors. And then I put the other half of that piece of trim. And the way it'll work is, they'll sit in there like that. And that piece of wood, those two pieces, they're spliced together with the trim on the, on the side of it will attach to a piece of plywood that goes across the front of this. And um, since it's got, you know, that lip right there that it catches on, hopefully it'll hold it in its place without having to have like too many latches or anything in it. So that's kind of where we are uh, with that. But I guess what I'm gonna work on now is just work on doing the holes for the outlets and get that going. Okay, so we made a hole for the electrical outlets and the two mic cables for the left side of the soundboard. I didn't think it out like I should have. Uh, I should have left more space here on the bottom and on this side right there because they're right up next to the frame. It's just gonna have to work because I've already cut the hole. Maybe in the future I can replace this side panel or something but anyway that's what we got all right so we have one of the outlets completed on the outside we don't have all the wires ran on the inside so go take a little break it took me a while to get it figured out and, and do it you know it usually takes me a while on things so it's not perfect again but it's good enough so i'm gonna show you what i did so there we go we have a recessed outlet for two mic xlr mic cables and those are two electrical outputs and I recessed them just so that way you don't see them sticking out at all. So I wanted to have it like that so I would never hit any connectors, hit any connectors or had any issues with that. Uh, we'll work on doing the other ones here after a little bit. I promised my wife we would uh, watch a movie. We have our anniversary coming up really soon, uh, like tomorrow. So I promised her we would do something today since we both have to work tomorrow. So I'm um, gonna take a little bit of a break and spend some time with her. All right, uh, since I wasn't able to capture any video over me making these recessed panels, I wanted to talk a little bit about them and the thought process that went into these. So I've seen some carts that have these plates that with a recessed little panel. Um, and I, I was wondering, you know, what are those? How do I get one? And it turned out, turns out I found these on uh, the internet through a place called Pin Elkham and they call them dishes. I searched their website um, and I could not find any dish plates that had exactly what I wanted. So this one right here has a electrical outlet along with two mic inputs 
and there was nothing that was like that on their website along with some of the other things that I wanted. What I ended up doing was just keeping this hole here, taking a piece of wood and just making the cutouts that I wanted in the piece of wood. And if I, if I ever want to change this, I can just take this piece of wood out, I take a new piece of wood, make the holes that I want and replace it. Here on this back panel of the sound cart, I have a larger recess plate as well. And this is definitely something I could not have gotten from them. Um, what I did with this one, not only do I have the electrical outlet and the output for the mic, for the center mic, center fill mic, I also have two DB25 outputs. Now these right here were another thing that I did not purchase as connectors that would affix to a wall plate or anything. What these are are actually couplers that I had to extend a couple of DB25 cords or cables that I had. And so I ended up taking these couplers and making a hole inside the little plate that I made and so, so they would just fit nice and snug in there. And then I sandwiched those on the other side of this plate with, between two pieces of wood that is drilled into the frame so it doesn't move. So that way, whenever I go to hook up our DB25 cables to these two couplers, they don't move or anything like that. And it's nice and firm uh, whenever I go to make the connections. So I was able to get the cart ready for practices um, and performances this coming week and this is the very first practice that I used it in I noticed that it's um, not painted it has the wood finish not painted or anything like that a lot of things need to be done to it but I wanted to give you all an idea of what went into this you can see here we have our electrical box and our mic outputs on either side we have two DB25 cables coming down. These are five foot, so they kind of wrap up on the inside and they go right here into the back uh, panel. Um, we have all of our cabling that comes out and goes to the speakers. We have our DB25 cables that go to, out to the pit. One goes to the mallets and the other one goes to the synths. And then we have a cable right here that is for power to the synths. And then on the other side of this, you can barely see it, there's a speaker. Um, so we have our center fill and power to the speaker right there. So here's another angle right here. You can see the two. We have our right speaker and our far right speaker. They go into the same snake along with the power cable. And they just wind up inside this bucket here and sit, stick inside that door. As we work our way around the cart, here's the back of the cart. You can see our two DB25 cables coming out the back the center fill mic output, the power to the center fill speaker, and the power that runs out to the synthesizers, which are actually just MIDI controllers. It's really running out to their monitors and to the MacBook Pro. And so here we have the left side of the cart, same thing as the right, with the far left and left speaker uh, running through a snake along with the power for that speaker. And you can see a little bit better angle of the box right here that has the two on the inside, the two uh, mic cables that are going to the outputs. Also here you can see the wireless receiver along with our power conditioner. Now in this picture you can see our external antenna right here. I have this antenna um, hooked up to a pearl clamp. So this clamp is uh, multi-actuated. Not only does it have a pivot for or place rather for allowing the whatever it's clamping clamp to and go up and down but it also has uh, a tilt function our external antenna can fold straight down into the cart for storage and for transport and what i can do is just undo this little t handle and this one right here lift this straight up and point it to where i need it to be pointed to uh, for performances so it worked out really nice and neat a lot better than I expected and again didn't anticipate this uh, fitting inside the cart like this but it was a happy occurrence so this is the cart inside of our trailer it does not have the front cover or the top lid you can't really see those from the single anyway I just wanted to fit it up in here and see how it fit with the our other equipment later this week I go and I'll make the front cover and the top lid. Just wanted to have it at a practice to see how it worked and how 
the ease of setup with it, and it was much improved. All right, this is going to be a great place to end the video. We'll have one more video in the series. The next video will show you the completed cart with it painted and the lid and the front cover uh, panel. And um, we'll show you a couple of other things that we did to it as well and go over the kind of the end of the project. Thank you for being with me in this video series. Uh, please like and subscribe. Hey, and you know, drop a comment below. Tell me what you think of this cart. Um, would you make a cart out of wood or would you just go and buy one out of metal and spend 10 times the amount? Uh, let me know what you think. So again, thank you for being with me and we'll see you next time.